Hello guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel of The Concept Eye and today we will discuss about enzymes. So what is actually enzymes? Enzymes are actually biocatalyst. Okay, they are biocatalyst. Okay, that actually alters the rate of the reaction where a substrate tends to give a product. Okay, if we add enzyme to it, the reaction actually increases and becomes faster. So this enzyme is something that is not consumed in the reaction hence we will get it at the outlet as well so what does it do is suppose we have the graphs of energy okay and here the barrier okay this barrier potential barrier is high without the enzyme without the enzyme without e it is actually higher from reactants to products but if we use enzyme so with enzyme this barrier decreases like this Hence, taking less effort and less time to get the desired product. Moving on to the next part is that how this enzyme helps. Okay, so let this be our enzyme E and this be our substrate. Okay, so what they do is they the substrate goes here. Okay, and these are the active sites where the reaction actually occurs. And this helps the substrate to get easy, easy access to these active sites to form the product. Okay, and hence this is the lock and key figure that we call. Okay, this substrate okay goes to the enzyme and forms ES. So this E plus S this forms ES. Okay, and then this this is now converted to product. This comes out. This comes out as again E E is left behind plus the product. Okay, that means this gives the product and plus E also that doesn't matter because E comes in E goes out. Main thing is that S is converted to product while this ES is formed in between. Now let's talk about holo enzymes. What are holo enzymes? Holo enzymes are those enzymes that have a protein part called as apoenzyme. Okay, this is the protein part. Let's write protein, and it has a cofactor. This cofactor is actually a non-protein part. Okay, this cofactor is non-protein part. Could be some heavy metals like magnesium and etc. etc. Next, let's talk about how this reaction goes and what are the rates and how do we find out the formation of product. Like V is the formation of product, the change of product concentration with time. This is actually due to this particular reaction that we see and hence this could be written as K2 into ES concentration. But the problem is what is this ES concentration? How to measure it? Because this is the lock and key and we cannot really examine whether and at what amount it is formed. So let's see, there are two methods for this to find this ES. One approach is the rapid equilibrium approach. The rapid equilibrium approach and the other approach is quasi quasi steady state approach. Let's look at both of them. So when we talk about rapid equilibrium approach and quasi steady state approach as in rapid equilibrium approach we focus on this reaction okay which is E plus S K1 upon K minus 1 that's the backward reaction this is forward reaction and ES because this is a primary concern in rapid equilibrium as the name suggests. So let's find out what is this ES. We can find it out as Km let's say Km prime B K minus 1 upon K1 which is now K minus 1 should be multiplied by ES so ES will come down and E and S will be multiplied with K1. So this goes over there and we find E and S. Here we can find out this ES value but another problem that arises is what is this E? What is this E? So let me just tell you what is this E? This E is actually okay if let's say initially we had enzymes E0 E0 concentration of enzymes out of which some formed ES some form lock and key okay to, of the total some form lock, lock and key and the rest that is available that is not making a lock and key pair with the substrate is denoted as E okay the leftover so we will put this E0 minus ES as we know E0 and we need to find ES in this to get the desired equation okay so we are here and we let's put this E value here so putting this E value this is E0 minus ES okay and multiplied with S divided by ES. What do we need? We need ES. So from this, if we solve this equation, ES comes up and plus S. So ES is actually equal to uh, E0 into S, E0 into S divided by Km prime plus S, Km prime plus S. This is ES. Now what, how to find the rate? We knew that, we knew that the rate of product formation is nothing but K2 into ES. So we just need to multiply K2 over here K2 K2 and we will find out the rate of product formation. We know the S, we know E0, we need we can calculate the Km prime and hence get the rate. One thing that it is to be noticed here is that this let me write one thing to be noticed here is that 
that this k2 into e0 now k2 into e0 can be written as maximum rate of formation of product vm that is denoted by so this is maximum rate why maximum because if you say let's say that all of the e0 all of the e0 becomes es okay and the leftover e is zero then what will happen this k2 es will become k2 e0 and as all of the enzyme is used up then the product formation will be the maximum hence vm is the maximum rate of product formation so now we look at this fossil steady state and this says that es concentration of es with time is constant because of this steady state feature that we are assuming okay for that we need to find out es now e plus s this this k1 k minus 1 es gives product we know that okay from here we need to find out this es how this d by es upon dt is nothing but the formation the formation due to k1 and e into s and the disappearance because of k minus 1 into es and minus k2 into es now this value should be equal to zero it is our assumption in quasi steady state process so let's put it to zero okay and also we need to put this e value that we have taken e naught minus es let's put that okay so guys let's put this equal to zero we'll find out that k1 into s let's take es at one side es at one side and we find out that if as goes there so k1 into e into s divided by k2 plus k minus 1 let's put the value of e so finally we get e naught into e naught minus es k1 let's take this k1 down okay let's take this k1 down that will be helpful if we put this k1 down okay if we take this k1 down then we can write it as a constant km okay not km prime km so let's write it e s is equal to e s into into km into km is equal to e naught e naught minus e s into this s so km plus s and that goes down so e s is coming out to be e naught into s divided by km plus s s right again to get the rate we can multiply with k2 k2 and again we see here that this k2 e naught is actually vm that's the maximum rate of product formation so both equations are quite similar except that in quasi steady state this is km and for rapid equilibrium it was km prime okay let's write that so we saw that in these two methods the difference was that km prime was taken here as k2 or oh no sorry k minus 1 upon k1 backward upon forward in equilibrium now here the km was all that is taking up the disappearance of es so they that constants were k2 plus k minus 1 and the formation is k1 this k2 is the only difference in between km and km prime and the final equation that we got is that v is the formation of product which is given by vm the maximum product formation rate into s divided by k plus s where this k can be km prime for rapid equilibrium and can be km for quasi steady state now guys let's finally look at some of the plots okay our first plot to determine this km and vm values is that lb plot okay the lb plot which considers the reciprocal double reciprocal so we have v is equal to uh, vm into s let's write it s only it's better to write it s only because bracket seems to sometimes confuse us so let's write this s s is actually the concentration of substrate okay let me just rub it yes so vm s into k km plus s and let's take the reciprocal taking the reciprocal this will become one upon so it's km upon vm into one upon s plus plus s s one upon v this is the intercept this is the slope if we plot one by s and one by v okay the plot should be a straight line okay a straight line with this and km km and that slope okay this slope is coming to be so let's not take over there that's too high so this will be slope of km upon vm and this will be one upon vm if this is one upon s and one upon v okay guys let's move to the second plot that is eh plot 
eh plot okay the second plot eh plot where we will modify the equation by multiplying this was 1 by v 1 by v and let's take v over here and vm over there so this will be vm is equal to v plus km v by s and hence we can see here we can see here that v is equal to this v is equal to vm minus km by s into v we can plot v versus v upon s here and that will be also a straight line with a negative slope now the last plot the last plot is similar to lb plot last plot is just similar to lb plot and that is h w plot hans wolf plot where what we do is we take this s over here we take this s okay we take this s over here here and here this will give us s upon v okay versus s this is the slope 1 upon vm and this is the intercept just remember two things that the plot will be always this s and v s and v are the things that are always in the plots as y and x mostly okay these two have the relations rest everything vm km and vm this everything is something that we need to find out as slope or intercept i hope you like the video please like share and subscribe and wait for the part two